welcome everyone. Inspection readiness, understanding the BIMO inspection requirements for sponsors, CROs, monitors, and investigators. How many of you have been inspected by the FDA? Give a check mark. Okay, it looks like we have maybe about a half of you have. And if the FDA would come today, how many of you would say that we're well prepared? Give a check mark. Ah, so. This is where I always try to start out with, you know, this is the world we live in, that we know inspections can happen. And this is where we think about that vision of what the end is with our project, ensuring that we have met all of the regulatory requirements, that we've also documented what has occurred and followed our procedures. This all sounds easier said than done, but if you think about why we are ensuring that we have these practices in place, it's ensuring that our subjects are protected and we also have met the regulatory requirements and that our data is also complete. So here's a little bit about me. Why I enjoy teaching is to help others learn, and when I first got started in clinical research, I sometimes was afraid that maybe I wasn't doing things correctly because I didn't understand the regulation. How many of you ever become concerned because the regulations are confusing or you're just not sure what they mean? Give a check mark. Does anyone ever have confusion with the regulations? It can happen, and this is where we have to go back with the regulations, checking to ensure that we're following the regulation. And if you think about the inspection from the FDA, that's exactly what they're going to do. Did you follow the regulations, good clinical practice, your procedures that you've put in place? So we're going to look at how the FDA will perform an inspection specifically addressing inspections at both the sponsor CRO and then the BIMO also includes monitors. And then you can have this, see this one here, for clinical investigators and sponsor investigators. So sponsor investigators would be an investigator that is, say, holding the IND or IDE, doing, say, an investigator-initiated trial. When we look at the BIMO, it can also help us be prepared for an inspection, but also it can help us even before we begin our trial. It can help our organization by looking at specifically what does the FDA expect sponsors, CROs, monitors, and also our investigators. So let's first look at the FDA BIMO and how this, how the BIMO can aid in preparation for an inspection prior, during, and at the completion of a clinical trial. And with years of experience and wisdom can also help us see some of the things that have occurred in our years of experience as clinical research professionals. So. The BIMO can help us when we are considering our SOPs. How many of you have ever written an SOP that was more strict than the regulation? If so, give a check mark. Or you have an SOP that's more strict than the regulation. We have quite a few that are more strict. Yeah. If your SOP says you need a CV every two years that's signed and dated, you have a SOP that is more strict than what the FDA requires. How many of you believe that the FDA requires that the investigator signs the CV? If you think this is true, give a check mark. 
If you think it is no, the FDA doesn't require this, give a red X. And we have Barnett Fund money that we're going to give. Those of you that gave the red X are correct. The FDA does not require that you have a CV that's signed or dated. Hmm. How many of you just learned something? Give a smiley face. Yeah, some of you just learned something. And where can you find this? You can find this in How to Complete the Form 1572 Guidance Document. And it specifically will provide that detailed information. So that is a helpful tool. And I love looking at guidance documents because our guidance documents help us understand the regulations. 